recent agreements uh, signed between uh, Medvedev and, and uh, Obama uh, call actually for the abolition of only about 50 weapons on each side. And these are the strategic ones and the missiles both in the submarines and on land, land-based missiles. And there are about 2,500 of these, 2,100 in Russia and 2,100 in America ready to go. Um, so in fact, it's really a face-saving thing. I think it may be for Obama to placate those dreadful Republicans who negate everything he wants to do and to get Russia on side and build up their trust. But on the other hand, America's intent on building a missile defence system, which really freaks Russia out, because if they have missiles that can be launched to hit the Russian missiles once they're and destroy them once they are launched, then that negates their nuclear overkill. It's all crazy, crazy thinking. But they say, well, to overcome that, they have to build more missiles, so it starts a new nuclear arms race. So that's the first treaty, it's the New START Treaty, Strategic Arms Reduction Talks. Um, and then the Non-Proliferation Treaty is up for review now and it comes up for review every five years and there's a huge conference at the UN and Obama will speak, which is really quite significant. And Obama has already called in Prague last year for the abolition of nuclear weapons. So he really He's got it in his bone marrow. I'm sure he heard me talk in Central Park in 1982 when we had a million people in Central Park and he was a young student at, uh, at Columbia University and wrote two really excellent articles about how to produce abolition of nuclear weapons between Russia and America. So the Non-Proliferation Treaty um, was written about, I don't know, I can't remember the date, but decades ago. And it says, fundamentally that, that countries will support other countries having nuclear power but no one is to build bombs. The only people to have bombs are the, are the ones who already had, the, had them and at that time it was France, China, America, Russia and England. Well since that time there have been more. Israel, Pakistan, India and maybe Iran, we're not sure. But it was to say, those five countries can have nuclear weapons and you guys out there, you can't have any, see. On the other hand, they said, we want you to have nuclear power, you're allowed to have all the technology, all the facilities to have nuclear power. So it's a push me, pull you animal. It's saying you're not allowed to build bombs, but you want the equipment so that you can build bombs. It's absolutely insane because the equipment a can produce highly enriched uranium to make bombs, which is what Iran is up to, or and B make plutonium in the reactors themselves. And both highly enriched uranium and plutonium are fuel for nuclear weapons. So the discussion going on at the United Nations and the non-proliferation treaty, no no nuclear countries have abided by it because Article Six of the treaty says that the nuclear nations, if other countries didn't build nuclear bombs, they would disarm. I think it was written in about 58. Well, they've done exactly the opposite. They've built more and more and more and more and more nuclear weapons with a kind of nuclear addiction. It is a nuclear addiction. It's like alcoholism, but so much more dangerous for those parrots. So if we have a nuclear war, they won't exist. Neither will any of this. It will be gone. We will have destroyed life on the planet. Well, what about the idea of possible limited nuclear wars and uh, things like depleted uranium and mini nukes? Are, uh, is, it, um, is it possible to have these sorts of conflicts without endangering the whole planet? You can't have a limited nuclear war, I think, without involving Russia and America because it would produce such international anxiety and tension. And the weapons are sort of programmed, ready to take off with sort of any minor infraction in the world, a la 9-11. A limited nuclear war between Pakistan and India, and both have about 65 to 80 bombs each, uh, would produce such devastation that it would cause nuclear winter. Um, and so crops would not 
grow for probably a decade. Billions of people would starve to death and it would be cold and there's nothing to eat. Billions. But that could also precipitate a global war between Russia and America and then no one lives and nothing lives. Uh, if someone had a small, I mean, say a terrorist blew up New York City. Yeah, that's sad. And it could happen. But do you know that Russia has 40 hydrogen bombs targeted on New York City as we speak? 40. There are 60 targeted on Moscow. Probably at least 60 on Washington DC. What are we talking about? I wrote an article with Robert McNamara, who is Kennedy's Secretary of Defense about this, that was published in the LA Times. But people, A, don't know these facts, and B, if they do, they sort of slough them off and practice psychic numbing. They're more worried about terrorists. And that's a method of displacement activity. If you put rats in a cage and threaten them with a lethal situation, they run away and do something irrelevant to that which threatens them. So to worry about terrorist attacks or small mini ukes, yeah, it's bad, but not worrying about the whole of this beautiful planet being destroyed tonight by accident or by design or whatever, computer error or hackers, the Chinese are hacking into the Pentagon computers now, is a form of insanity. And it's also a form of passive suicide. We are a very strange species. Move on. Move on. Keep moving on. Yet over they go, casting themselves bodily out into space. President Obama is renewing um, the whole nuclear power debate by um, providing the loan guarantees that would allow for new plants to be built for the first time in more than 30 years. Helen Caldicott, are you concerned about this? Oh, Amy, the whole thing's nuclear madness, which is what I called my first book that I wrote in 1978. A new report from the New York Academy of Sciences um, has just translated 5,000 papers from Russian into English. It's the most devastating report I've ever seen. Up to a million people have already died from Chernobyl, um, and people will continue to die from cancer for virtually the rest of time. What we should know is that a millionth of a gram of plutonium or less uh, can induce cancer or will induce cancer. Um, each reactor has uh, 250 kilos or 500 pounds of plutonium in it. Uh, you know, there's enough to plutonium in these reactors to kill everyone on Earth. Now, what George doesn't understand, George, you don't understand internal emitters. I was commissioned to write an article for the New England Journal of Medicine about the dangers of nuclear power. I spent a year researching it. You've bought the propaganda from the nuclear industry. They say it's low-level radiation. That's absolute rubbish. If you inhale a, micro, a millionth of a gram of plutonium, the surrounding cells receive a very, very high dose. Most die within that area because it's an alpha emitter. The cells on the periphery remain viable they mutate and their regulatory genes are damaged. Years later, that person develops cancer. Now, that's true for radioactive iodine that goes to the thyroid, CG137 that goes to the brain and muscles, uh, strontium-90 goes to bone, causing bone cancer and, and leukemia. It's imperative, George, because you're highly intelligent and a very important commentator that you understand internal emitters and radiation and it's not low level to the cells that are exposed. Radiobiology is imperative to understand these days. I do suggest humbly that if you read my book Nuclear Power is Not the Answer, which I think I've tried to send you once, you'll learn uh, about that. I commissioned a study done by Arjun Makajani from IEER about three, four years ago called Carbon Free, Nuclear Free. The truth is, George, that there's enough renewable technology now, right now, which is relatively cheap, to supply the whole of the US's needs by 2040 without any carbon 
and any nuclear. We just need to have the politicians to get out, the po out of the pockets of the nuclear companies, the coal companies, the oil companies, and start funding renewable energy. Why isn't there a solar panel on every single house in America? Solar hot water systems, windmills everywhere. You know it would increase the GP GDP and employ hundreds of thousands of people throughout the world. This is the way to go. That's the prescription for survival. Nuclear power, George, creates massive quantities of radioactive waste. There's no one way to put it on Earth that's safe. As it leaks into the water over time, it will bioconcentrate in the food chains, in the breast milk, in the fetuses that are thousands of times more radiosensitive than adults. One X-ray to the pregnant abdomen doubles the incidence of leukemia in the, in the child. And over time, nuclear waste will induce epidemics of cancer, leukemia and genetic disease and random compulsory genetic engineering. And we're not the only species with genes, of course. It's plants and animals. So this is an absolute catastrophe, uh, the likes of which the world has never seen Let's before. Let's get George Mambio's response. Hmm. Yes, well, 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 thank you, Helen, and um, thank you for all the work you've done over the years, which I think has made a fantastic contribution. But what you were saying about the impacts of radiation just, just not, does not seem to square with the observed cancer rates amongst populations who have been that's exposed right. to high uh, levels George, of, that's of radiation. Right. Um, George, well, can I just, George, just it's give not you right. A, you need a, to read the literature. George well, Martin. I have been reading the literature. I, I have been reading the literature, and there's a very extensive literature. The medical literature? literature? Um, have so, you read so, the New York the Academy literature. of Sciences report? I, I, I haven't read the whole report. I've read, I've read part of it. But um, can, can I just say you that... You must read the whole uh, report. You know, I, uh, sorry, Helen, can, can, would you please let me finish what I'm trying to say? Um, the, so I just think... You know, we've George, got to be very, George, very careful wrong, George, and about you, which science we trust George, and which we do not. Helen Cole, George, you must listen to me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a paediatrician. I'm a physician, highly trained. I was on the faculty at Harvard Medical School. My specialty is cystic fibrosis, the most common genetic disease of childhood. I actually, and I'm not boasting, but I'm a very good doctor. You know, I came second in my year of medicine. I don't say things that are inaccurate, otherwise I would be deregistered. I mean, you, doctors can't lie. George, there's a huge literature on internal emitters and radiation. Uh, the, the New York Academy of Science, this report on, on Chernobyl is absolutely devastating. Uh, but. There are now 2,600 genetic diseases described. Uh, I first learned about radiation by learning about the, ex the experiments with Drosophila fruit fly by Muller when I did first year medicine in 56. You can produce a gene for a crooked wing that's passed on generation to generation. We will not live to see the abnormalities created by radiation uh, from our activities now because, you know, we'll all be dead by the time we have 20 or more generations. But it's imperative that people understand that internal emitters cause cancer, but the incubation time for cancer is any time from two to 60 years. George, the International Atomic Energy Agency has an unholy alliance with the WHO World Health Organization, which says WHO cannot examine any accident related to nuclear power, etc., without the permission of the IAEA. And indeed, it didn't examine Chernobyl.